Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I am here today at Universal Orlando with a brand new video. Now we are gonna do a little staycation friends at Cabana Bay. This is one of Universal's most popular resorts so I'm gonna check out everything the resort has to offer from the benefits of staying here to the rooms, to the food. We're gonna check it all out and see if this is somewhere you should stay on your next Universal vacation. I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited. Let's get to it. <laughs> So I just pulled up. They told me to park in short-term parking to check in. I did do the online check-in, so I think I just need to go in and get my key. One thing they're doing at Universal Orlando that they're not doing at Disney is you do have to get temp checked when you get into the resort, and then they give you a wristband to wear for the day. Got temp check, got my wristband. If you have 100.4 or higher, they're not gonna let you in. Um, but I do like that they're doing the temp checks at the resorts, they're not doing it at Disney again. Um, so you will get a wristband. You only have to get temp checked once a day. If I were to go to the parks right now, I wouldn't have to get temp checked because I've already got the wristband. So here is the lobby. This resort has a fabulous retros, 50s and 60s theme. And you are gonna see that all over the place in the style of furniture and the design, the artwork, very fabulously 50s. I did the mobile check-in last night. It was super easy, got an email, said you can check in. I selected what time I'd be arriving if I was parking a car um, and they checked me in already. So I'm gonna go in this lane that says checked in already. Uh, yes, I am, have my ID and credit card ready and they'll get me on my way. So here is where I will do that. Um, they do have the glass dividers up between the different team members and you. Just checked in. It was super fast and easy. I want to show you some other services here. They do have the bell services right here where you can store your luggage, maybe on your checkout day. If you're still going to the parks, you can store their luggage there. They also have a rental car desk here. Not only can you check your luggage at luggage services, like say your room's not ready, or again, if it's your checkout day and you're going to the parks, but Universal's also still doing package pickup, which Disney is not. So if you're a resort guest and buy something in the park, you can have it sent up to the hotel. Keep in mind, they probably won't get it for a few hours or after the park closes. So if you're leaving that day, that's probably not a great service, but if you're staying overnight, might as well not carry your stuff around. I'm drawn to this giant palm tree just casually in the middle of the lobby and it says that the inspired by this spectacular lobby terrarium at the celebrated hotel in Bar Harbor, Florida in 1956, designed by architect Morris Lapidus and developed by Preston Robert Titch and Lawrence Titch, founders of the Lowe's Hotel. So this is a Lowe's brand hotel, um, which is really cool that they then are using something inspired by an actual 50s retro hotel right here in the middle of the Cabana Bay lobby. Picked up my room key, was super quick and easy. I wonder who's on it. They all have different characters and stuff on them. So today I got Transformers. All right, so this is my room key. I could set up charging privileges if I wanted to on that. I also got a map on how to get to my building. So we are in the lobby right here. I'm over here in the Continental. She let me know how to get over to park my car. Universal's Cabana Bay is considered a prime value resort. So Universal, unlike Disney, has four categories of resorts. They've got value resorts, which is endless summer, which is not as close as some of these other hotels. You can't walk from that one. Um, and then they've got prime value, which is Cabana Bay and Adventura. And then they have Preferred, which is Sapphire Falls. And then they have Premier, which is Royal Pacific, the Hard Rock, and Portofino Bay. So this would be equivalent, I would say, to like a Pop Century or an Art of Animation over at Walt Disney World. We'll definitely check out the room. Um, they do have standard rooms, which is what I will be in. But they also have family suites that sleep up to six. And they also have two bedroom suites suites that sleep up to eight. So lots of great options here. If you're a bigger party, you'd be able to get your whole family into one room here. As far as pricing goes for this resort, they do have all different kinds of rooms and views. They've got interior rooms, exterior rooms. So think motel versus hotel. They've got, again, those family suites, that two bedroom suite. For a standard room, it starts around $100 and then can go upwards of $280, close to $300 during the peak season. So think Christmas, New Year's, 
4th of July, it can get up to words of $300. For the family suites, again, those sleep up to six. It's got two beds as well as a pullout and a kitchenette. Those start around $140 and will go upwards of $360 during the peak season. And lastly, the two bedroom suites, those have a Volcano Bay view. So everything else I've been giving you is the standard view. So the lowest of the low, um, but those two bedroom suites, again, can sleep up to eight adults, have a kitchenette. Those start around $400, maybe a little bit less, and will go over $600 during the peak season. Now that does sound like a lot, because again, we are at a prime value resort, but keep in mind that you have the capacity to sleep eight adults, which means you could book one room as opposed to two, and you're gonna have that beautiful Volcano Bay view. So enough talking about the rooms, Let's go see one of the rooms. Thanks to my handy dandy map, I definitely recommend looking at that because I almost parked in the wrong building. I have made it to my building, the Continental. All the buildings have different names on them. That will help you a lot when you're driving around because I almost parked at the Americana, which would have been just embarrassing. Also, Cabana. I'm um, not Cabana Bay. We're at Cabana Bay. Volcano Bay is literally right there. You can walk very easily from here to Volcano Bay. So all you water park lovers out there, this may be a great resort for you. I actually did a video recently where I went to Volcano Bay and uh, as a not water park person, I had quite a great time. So I'm pretty impressed with their, uh, their water park here at Universal. You know, it's just water parks are like, you gotta carry your inner tube up things and it's hot and you're in a bathing suit and like sweating, you have to get wet. Oh, but I did really like Volcano Bay because they have two lazy rivers, one actually lazy, one not so lazy. They had some really cool slides and the food was pretty dang good for being a water park. So check that video out if you want a Volcano Bay adventure. Four, two, three, eight, second floor. So clearly this is an interior room that I got. Again, they also have some exterior rooms, um, but I upgraded, it was literally like a few dollars to go from the standard room to the pool view room. So that's what we'll be in today. All right. All right, let's check out the room. So this is your standard layout where you get the two queens. They do have king rooms available as well. You can see they've got that fabulous retro vibe going on with the orange padded headboards and the artwork and the lights. Uh, there is a little table and chair set here. If you want to have some pizza delivered to you or something like that, you can do that. They have pizza delivery. We've got a fabulous view of the pool out here, which we will go scope out. Um, but they do have the thicker curtains for sleepy times. Coffee maker, very important. We got some coffees here, lots of drawers in this sweet retro themed uh, dresser, a little mini fridge. So you can put some things in there. If you bring anything or a medicine that needs to be refrigerated. Um, if you do need a refrigerator, I always would put that in your special request when you check in. There's a spot for that on the mobile check-in um, or let them know when you book your reservation, call them because I believe every room has a mini fridge, but just in case if you need it for like medicine or something, that's always a good thing to make sure. Over on the nightstand, you've got a phone, plenty of outlets. The remote is in a plastic bag. Love that retro clock. A little bit more storage space. And I do like that all of these lights are, uh, per each person can control them. So if you wanna read and nobody else does, you can control your own little light. Moving on, let's check out the closet. Pretty standard. You do have an ironing board in here, a luggage rack, and a safe, and an iron. So pretty standard. Thermostat set at 67. You can change it however you want. I like it a little warmer, so I'm going to go 69. Uh, dads, go nuts. Live your thermostat dreams. All right, let's go about the bathroom. Guess I can take my mask off. Kind of forgot I was on. All right, so here's your bathroom. Pretty standard from the first view. Um, you've got your little section with the sink. There are some towels, drawer space, drawer space, more towels down here. Um, you do have a hair dryer, but it's one of these kind of dinky little ones. 
Um, so if you need a better hair dryer, you're going to want to pack one that would take forever to dry my hair. Um, and then you have some basic toiletries. Oh my gosh. I love that they have zest and it looks retro. That's a nice touch. Here's your towels. One thing I'm obsessed with at the universal resorts that they don't have at the Disney resorts is they actually have a texting service you can sign up for when you mobile check in or check in. Um, and it actually allows you to text back and forth with a team member. And if you needed more towels, you could literally just text them and they'll bring them to you. You can also text them things like, what time do the buses start running in the mornings? What are the park hours? Which park has early park admission in the morning? How can I get from here to here? You can ask them anything and they will get an answer for you. It's a really, really great service. I've already asked them a bunch of stuff about transportation in the morning. They're probably like, she's texting us again already. But I think this is a super service that I wish every hotel in the universe offered. Wrapping up our hotel room tour, the second section of the bathroom. So you have the Royal Throne, more towels, and of course your shower, pretty basic. But once again, I am loving that they have old school, I wonder where they got this stuff, um, toiletries in here. I absolutely love that. I love that they have mini bottles anywhere because a lot of places have resorted to the big pumps, which I will, you know, say less plastic. That's definitely a good thing. Um, but I'm gonna take those mini bottles and bring them with me somewhere else. Very important, ladies, they do have a full length mirror. I have been into hotel rooms that don't have a full length mirror and then in the morning you're like, what do I look like right now? It's a mystery for everyone. Guess I'll find out in my photos, but you've got a full length mirror in addition to this one, so. Overall, a pretty nice and standard hotel room. With my annual pass holder discount, this room is only $99. I am here in the middle of the week, so that's definitely more of a value price, but I really can't complain about this hotel room for less than $100 a night. Um, you do have to pay for parking overnight if you drive. It's $18 a night per vehicle. But overall, I'm pretty impressed that this room is this inexpensive and it's actually in a hotel. It's not a motel with the outdoor door situation. Um, but the room, no complaints here. We should check the bed though. Very comfy. I'll report back in the morning, but it's legally required when you come to a hotel room, you have to jump on the bed. Everyone knows that. All right, I've masked back up. I've got my fanny pack on. I've gone full tourist. Let's go explore this resort, check out the pools. I'm hungry, let's get something to eat and go see everything that this resort has to offer. And what I'm seeing is the same thing we've seen at every hotel pool since the reopening, Disney or Universal. They've spaced all the chairs out to be six feet apart from each other. So don't move those around. Those are spaced out on purpose. So that way, once you get to your little pot of chairs, you can remove your facial covering. Hands down, the coolest thing about the pool here at Cabana Bay is they have a literal lazy river at this pool which is awesome. You may know I love a lazy river. It's my favorite thing at a water park, which is saying something. I see people in the river with and without tubes. And if you're thinking, but Molly, I didn't pack an inner tube to go on vacation. What do you mean people have inner tubes? Here at the Tube Shack, you can actually buy yourself an inner tube. They're actually very moderately priced. They have a ball as well if you wanted a giant beach ball. Um, but they've got a 47 inch tube, that's $12.50. A sit and lounge, $15. Kid sizes, there's some cool designs for the kiddos. They also sell floaties. Would it be weird if I got this one? Anyway, so you can get an inner tube here and then it's yours forever, a present to deflate and take home. They also have complimentary life jackets here for your little ones before you get on the lazy river. But obviously, if you're staying here, you should definitely do a pool day and enjoy this awesome amenity. I found a little gem here. They do have a self-air filling station, so they'll blow it up for you, obviously, when you buy it. But if you need to put a little extra air in there or you bring one from the dollar store, you can pump it up right there. 
Overall, this is a pretty awesome pool. This is one of two here, but this one is probably better because it has a lazy river. Um, also, they do normally do poolside activities, but those are suspended right now. But let's go check out the Hideaway Bar and Grill, which is the pool bar at this pool. Spotted a couple of other pool features. This is normally a kid's fountain. Obviously not running right now for safety reasons, but there'd be like a splash pad style fountain right here for your kids during normal times. And then also blocked off, clearly you couldn't very easily socially distance in here, but there is a hot tub with what a view with the volcano in the background. Off to the side of the pool is the hideaway bar and grill. It's literally hidden away under here, which makes it nice and shady. Um, they've got a big bar right here. And then they also have a grill down on that end so you can grab something to eat poolside. But let's check out a menu. Drink menu, wines, beers, non-alcoholic smoothies. On the rocks, the hot stuff. Ooh, a spicy marg. Aloha punch, fun in the sun. Lots of different cocktails. And some frozens as well. I am starving though, so I'm gonna grab something to eat over here at the Hideaway Bar and Grill. Let's take a look. So appetizers and salads, they've got wings, nachos, salads, kids meal, grouper nuggets on the kids meal, how daring. Uh, they are known for the Honolulu hot dog, which is a hot dog with a bacon, pineapple bacon sausage, passion fruit mustard, a lemon garlic sauce. They also have big kahuna hot dog, fish tacos, buffalo chicken wrap, some burgers. I love the vibe. It's definitely very retro. You've got these retro chairs and this cool wall right here. So I'm gonna sit under here under a fan in the shade and eat my lunch. Also, got a water, got my pager, just ready for it to go off. My lunch is ready. He said that the fish tacos and the Honolulu hot dog are the most popular thing. So since I don't love hot dogs, I went for the fish tacos, which are fried grouper with a Cajun remoulade um, and a pico de gallo. They look amazing. Comes with French fries. Those look seasoned and delicious. And then I asked for a side of the lemon garlic sauce, which is one of the toppings on the Honolulu hot dog, because I love all of those words, lemon, garlic, and sauce. And I'm going to dip my fries into it. Okay, I'm back under my shaded section. I just took it out there to take pictures of it, but now I'm back in the shade to eat. They look amazing. Well, they taste amazing. I took a really big bite. Mm. So the first bite I took was the end, so it was mostly the fried fish, and that was the most of the flavor I could taste, which was just basically fried with a hint of fish. And then I took a smaller bite, and that's when I got the Cajun Remoulade, I got the slaw, I got the crunchy pico de gallo. Really, really fresh, really bright. Love these, are really nice tortillas. They're really soft. Um, the fish, I, I kind of wish it wasn't fried. I wish it was grilled so that I could taste some of the sauce and the toppings a little bit more. But they do add a nice, you know, lightness to the fried fish. I also wasn't sure if I was going to like grouper. I don't love seafood, but I usually like fish tacos because it's usually a mild fish and it's fine. So I guess I like grouper. Doesn't really have a lot of flavor. It just tastes like fried. I wish the Cajun Remoulade had a little more kick too. But overall, I am dazzled that this is food from a pool bar at a value resort. This is better than anything I've eaten at like Pop Century or an All Star, for sure. Let's try these fries now. Hmm. Seasoned really well. They've got some kind of special seasoning on it. Almost tastes like Old Bay. And dip it in this lemon garlic sauce. Again, this is normally comes on the signature hot dog. The audacity of this sauce being this good. That's amazing. I want to put that on everything. Lemon and garlic and an aioli. Wow. Yeah, do yourself a favor and order a little of that. This is a really good meal and it was like $10. And this is a lot of food. You could easily share this. Each person get a really hearty sized taco and some fries, good to go. Wow. So far the food is impressing me. We'll see what happens at dinner though. Wow. I am pleasantly surprised by that meal. 
Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should like leave a theme park or Volcano Bay to come over to Cabana Bay and go to their pool bar. I'm just saying that was a surprisingly good meal to come from a pool bar at a value resort. That lemon garlic sauce, however, though, that might be worth a trip. They also have some sandy beaches if you prefer to get sand all over you while you're enjoying the pool. I don't love sand if you couldn't gather that. But hey, some people do. This is back to the lobby. So from my understanding, the lobby sits kind of in the middle of the resort. And then there's room buildings on either side of the pool. Yep, so here's your lobby right here. Here is where we are. This is the building I'm staying in. Here's that pool with the lazy river. And then we're gonna go check out the other pool on the other side right now. For reference as well, the buses are right here. So it looks like these rooms at the Americana are the closest to the buses, if you wanted to put in that room request. But Volcano Bay, the walkway is over here at three. So if you're planning to do a lot of Volcano Bay, you may wanna request the Bayside building right here. Another cool activity you can do here at the resort is they actually have fire pits where they will light these babies up in the evening time. You can come sit around and enjoy a fire, pack your own s'more stuff, you know, the usual. I don't know if these are happening right now. I'll use the tech service to find out, um, but I have actually stayed here before and come and sat by the fire in the evening times of the cocktail with my friends and it is lovely. Coming in those doors off the side of the pool, I've ended up in the Bay Liner Diner, which is the main restaurant here at the Cabana Bay. Um, we are gonna have dinner here so we can test it out. But as you can see, it too is full of that retro goodness from the designs of the seating, the light structures. They're playing old trailers and commercials on the TVs. They've got this fun kind of like retro looking family here on the mural. But we're gonna have dinner here. This Bayliner Diner's open breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is gonna be your more standard theme park fair. They've got different stations, a deli, pizza, burgers, sandwiches. So we'll see what their food's like in the evening time. But one thing I wanted to show you is something really cool outside the diner. Parked outside the Bayliner Diner, they actually have all of these old cars, which is really fun to come look at and take pictures of. And if you read the placards, they were actually used in movies. So this one was used, 1958 Chrysler Imperial, used in the attack of the 50-foot woman. Look, it's got like the vintage luggage and everything in the back. This one I believe to be a Thunderbird based on that logo. Yes, a 1963 Ford Thunderbird Sports Roadster. It was used in the Queen of the Nile episode of The Twilight Zone. Wow, what a crossover. Didn't even know we'd get that, did you? Ooh, we've also got our fabulous wood paneled station wagon. Look at that, the luggage in the back. It's really neat. I'm not even a car buff, but I'm impressed. This one was used in Two for the Road with Audrey Hepburn. And last, but certainly not least, we've got a Chevy Impala used in the mad, it's a mad, 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 mad world with Jerry Lewis, Spencer Tracy. This is pretty neat. So I feel like people probably don't notice this or they notice it really quickly when they're walking to the bus stop. So if you have a second or you're a car fan, come check out these old cars. While we're out here sweating, wanted to take a look at the bus stop. So right here along the side of the lobby, right outside the Bayliner Diner, um, you can walk to the parks. It's about a 20 or so minute walk all the way to the theme park. So that may not be what some people want to do, but they do start the buses running. Um, they said tomorrow because early park admission, which is another resort perk, starts at 8 a.m. The buses will start running at 7 a.m. every 15 minutes. You can use that tech service to find out what time the buses are running. Um, but they do have buses that will take you over to Universal Studios. Florida and Islands of Adventure. They're gonna drop you off on City Walk where you'll then go through security and be able to choose which one you wanna to walk to. This way is also how you can get to Volcano Bay walking. Really short walk over to Volcano Bay. If you are staying at a resort 
you get a special entrance over there. If you're going to Volcano Bay, definitely walk. They don't actually offer a direct bus from here to Volcano Bay because it's so close. Um, from the farthest ends of the property, it could be about 15 or so minutes over there, but from most places, it's gonna be a really short walk over to Volcano Bay. And that is one of the perks of staying here is that you are so close to Volcano Bay if that's something that you're excited about. As far as the parks go, I think it really is a matter of personal preference. It is about a 20 or so minute walk, I've been told. I'm gonna walk to the park in the morning and clock it so I can give you guys an exact answer. Um, but for me, I like to get up and be in control of my own destiny. If I'm getting up early to take advantage of early park hours or get to the park as early as I possibly can, I don't wanna have to wait on a bus. I don't want it to be too full. I wanna just get there as soon as possible. So I like walking. But I know not everybody can walk if you've got a big group, if you've got folks in strollers or wheelchairs, walking may not be an option, especially a 20 minute walk in the morning. So then you're gonna to wanna to take the buses. I have been sitting here for a while and I have seen a bus pull up at least every 15 minutes, if not more. So I do think they have a good amount of buses, but it's just a personal preference, I think. However, for me, I wanna to get to getting, I wanna start having fun. So I like stepping out on my own two feet. Here's another look at the Bayliner Diner. Again, we're gonna eat dinner here. It's about 3.30 in the afternoon, so not a lot going on, not a lot open, because most people are either eating at the pool bars and at the pool if they're here at the property, or they're at the theme park. So I bet this place comes a little more lively at night, but just wanted to take a look around. Looks like they've got some grab-and-go things, some pastries, snacky stuff, grab-and-go beverages, salads, sandwiches, desserts, Oh, a grab-and-go charcuterie board? Hello. Um, grab-and-go sushi. Oh, <gasps> s'mores kits. I did get an answer from the tech service that the fire pits are open and running. They run all day long. You turn it on yourself. They have the same hours as the pools. So maybe this evening we need to get ourselves a s'mores kit. It's going to be way more than if I were to go to the grocery store. But let's see. Chocolate is... Okay, I want a classic. We're gonna remember this $2. The sticks are $2, so we're at $4. Marshmallows are $2.50, so $6.50. And then the crackers are $2.50 as well, so $9. Oh, or you could just get the s'mores kit right here. They had it marked out. I didn't have to do the math. Wow. Anyway, um, let's do some s'mores later. That sounds really fun. They have refillable mugs here like they do at Disney. It looks like they're $10 for one day, $15.99 for three days, and length of stay, $18.50. You can fill those up at the soda places around the resort. And I believe Icy's count as well, so that's excellent news. My eyeballs have also found a frozen yogurt bar. Oh my. There's a strawberry lemonade sorbet, chocolate and vanilla. And then over here, they have toppings. Doesn't look like they have a lot of toppings right now, but maybe at dinner time they'll have more. Or maybe they don't have toppings right now because of safety. A team member did confirm that the ICs do count um, and that it works anywhere here at the resort. There is a refill at the pools. There are ones in here. There's other ones in the lobby. There's one up at the bowling alley. So if you're gonna be here and have a couple resort days, keep that in mind. But also keep in mind if you have a Coca-Cola freestyle cup, you can reactivate those and they'll work here as well. And those do work at the parks. So that's probably the better move. My eyes have come upon what is for sure the most beautiful thing I've seen at this resort yet. That's right, friends. There's literally a Starbucks right here in the lobby of the Cabana Bay. Wow. Next to Starbucks, we have the gift shop here. It's a universal gift shop. So they may have some Cabana Bay exclusive stuff we can look for, but they're going to have a lot of stuff you can grab in the park. Right off the bat, they've got VelociCoaster merchandise. They've got a lot of swimsuits and pool apparel if you need that. Let's see. Some Marvel stuff. The required for any hotel you've got your toiletry section in case you forget something some knickknacks simpson stuff shirts mugs deck of cards sweatshirts towels totes t-shirts all kinds of stuff that say just cabana bay on it 
some Seuss and Minion, general universal theme things, and of course, a little Harry Potter selection. Scooting upstairs. Now, they do have a bowling alley upstairs, but it's not open yet, but don't fear. We are gonna go bowling later. It'll be very fun, I assume. I'm very bad at bowling, but I always have a good time. For starters, you have game o -rama, which is an arcade o -rama, I assume. Lots of games in here. Also on this second story is the Jack LaLanne Physical Fitness Studio, which there are no fitness studios at Disney Valley Resort. So this is a huge perk for some people. You can see all the exercise equipment in there, bunch of cardio machines. Um, it's actually closed right now for enhanced disinfecting practices. Right outside here, they've got a list of not only the hours, but when it is cleaning. It's between that 3.30 and 4 o'clock window right now. But this is a pretty big perk of staying at a value resort. There's this nice little ramp out to the other pool area. So let's go scope that out. And I gotta say, friends, that between the food I just had, we're still testing the food out though. The fact that there's a bowling alley, a fitness center, two pools, including a lazy river, this may be the best value resort I've ever been to. That's a bold claim. It's a bold claim, I realize it. But just saying. This is also a really nice pool. This pool's big. It's got a zero entry. It has a water slide, which is very nice. They also have these cabanas along the side that you can rent that are $75 a day. I mean, I personally am definitely Team Lazy River over Team Water Slide, but there's two big, huge pools here, and each has its own bar and grill. The one here is called Atomic bar and grill and we're gonna go over there let's first look at the atomic grill and just see what's on their menu i don't believe it's the same as the other location uh yeah so we've got some salads pizzas sandwiches gyros 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 not 100 percent on that one so a little bit different than the other pool bar menu I assume this place is called Atomic Tonic because it has this spaceship that's headed to the moon. It's got a monkey on it named Ham. Morgan's not gonna like that because she does not agree with sending animals into space as she demonstrated on RTT, which like, I don't blame her, I agree. So I don't know if she should ever come here. Okay, three things. One, I texted Morgan a picture of Ham the monkey that's being sent to space and she's not thrilled. She said Ham's smile is a lie and he did not give his consent to go to space. So, <laughs> two, Stu the bartender, very nice, told me that the cabanas, yes, they are $75 and that they include a cooler with soft drinks and waters. There's a TV in there, there's a safe, um, they fit up to six people. And if you wanna rent those for the day, you'd have a nice little shaded spot and some drinks and a safe and everything for your pool day. And number three, he recommended, I get the namesake drink. He said it's the most popular one on the menu. It's a very subtle, color it's the atomic tonic now this baby is limoncello tito's vodka and melon liqueur and then it's got lemonade and pineapple juice i said is it sweet it sounds sweet still and he said it's more refreshing than it is sweet it's less sweet than a lot of other things on the menu so he convinced me to give it a try all right this is refreshing i'll give him that the strongest flavor is probably the pineapple. Even though he didn't put a ton in there, I'm not tasting a ton of the liquor, which is kind of dangerous because there's three different kinds in here. There's a little vodka. Yeah, it mostly just tastes refreshing. It tastes pineapple-y with a little lemon. Very refreshing. Not something I would order normally if it wasn't the namesake drink. Not something I would need to order 50 of. Um, but that's kind of how I am with fruity drinks anyway. Like when I get on a cruise, I get one Miami Vice, and then I'm like, that's enough. It's too sweet. But this isn't super sweet. I stirred it up a little bit to make it uh, this lovely Shrek green. Now I taste the melon. I had to mix the melon in. I like it more now. I like melon flavor. So yeah, that's unique. 
not a lot of stuff has melon in it, but that's a great summer outside fruit. It's a few minutes before five, which is when you can sign up for the bowling. There's a little bit of a line already, but that's okay. They're open till 10 o'clock and uh, I'm okay bowling in a little bit. I wanna get dinner first, but the only way to sign up for bowling is to come in person when they're open. So you're gonna wanna get here a little early. All right, so I got here a few minutes before five. There was already a short line to sign up for bowling. They open at five o'clock or whenever they open, but there was a short line. Took just a few minutes though. I was able to sign up for a time a few hours from now. They did have some space available, but they're not able to use all the lanes right now for health and safety, which is why reservations are highly recommended. You do have to be staying at Cabana Bay to bowl. You have to show your room key when you sign up to prove that you are a resort guest. Um, so I've got a bowling reservation in a little bit. For now, it's dinner time. Back to Bayliner Diner. Let's scope out all of the dinner stations. Okay, to start, we've got hot off the grill. Ooh, it's fries with truffle sauce and fresh rosemary, hello. Okay, we've got a cheeseburger, a Cabana Bay burger, a Beyond burger, and a cheeseburger and shake combo here at the grill. That Cabana Bay burger looks really good with the mushrooms and the onions. That may be a winner. Okay, at International Eats, we have Brazilian beef churrasco, a citrus and herb roasted chicken half, ahi tuna bowl, and an Asian vegetable stir fry. Yum. So that seems like it's gonna be your most unique meals. Over here at the pizza section, we've got some pizzas and pastas, classic cheese, pepperoni, Mediterranean flatbread, chicken alfredo, spaghetti. And then on the sides, that Mediterranean flatbread looks good too. On the sides, we've got, ooh, white cheddar mac and cheese. We might need that too. And then over at the sandwiches section, the deli, we've got a roast turkey and provolone, the ultimate grilled cheese, ooh, which has spinach and tomato on the grilled cheese, a Cuban, a chicken wrap. Normally, they also have a CYO salad bar, but since they can't have that for health and safety reasons, they've got some actually pretty good looking big salads here. Uh, that are $9.75 plus tax. So they've got a big Mediterranean one, a Cobb salad, a super vegan salad, and a Caesar. So if you do want something lighter, they look pretty good. And those were not here earlier, so I, I believe them to be made fresh. But we're gonna not do a salad, even though that Mediterranean looks yummy. Because I overheard them say something here at the deli that may be the best thing we could have ever done. Here's my dinner from Bayliner Diner. I really just like saying that, honestly. Um, I got the ultimate grilled cheese because I overheard them say you can add bacon if you want. So this is a grilled cheese sandwich with three different kinds of cheese. It comes with spinach and tomatoes. And then I added bacon. Um, okay, yes. And then the soup of the day was a roasted tomato and red pepper. And he said I could get that as my side. Normally it comes with chips fruit or pasta salad, but he said you can also get a cup of soup on the side. What is better than grilled cheese in a tomato soup? Nothing. I hope this doesn't let me down. Whoa, it's so cheesy. I love grilled cheese sandwiches. I eat them a lot. Like I literally ate one for dinner last night at my house. Um, it's super, super cheesy. I wish the cheese was a little meltier. Love the fresh tomato and spinach. And then of course, who doesn't want to add bacon to things? It's also really good buttery bread. And it feels like it's like a multigrain because there's some texture to it. Mm. I'm impressed. Is it the best grilled cheese I've ever had? No, probably not. My husband makes a mean grilled cheese. But it's really, really good. And it's better than anything I've eaten at a Pop Century or an all-star food court off the top of my head. Sometimes Art of Animation dazzles me with more unique things. But I even now can't think. They do a good, uh, some stuff at their international window, some Indian inspired dishes that are pretty good. But as far as the other values go, this is definitely better than something you're gonna get there. Mmm, mmm. I dipped it in the soup. The soup has a ton of flavor. I love that it's tomato and red pepper because it adds a little bit of depth to the soup as opposed to just being creamy tomato. The pepper adds a lot of flavor to it. Let's try just the soup though. It tastes like a pizza. Is that a weird thing to say? I mean, I guess those are two ingredients used on pizza, but I really taste the red pepper and I like that. So yeah, I gotta say, again, I don't think you should like rush out of the theme parks to come eat here. There's definitely better places to eat in the theme parks or on City Walk. But if you're having a pool day, 
if you're back because it started raining we're having a low-key day at um, Universal based on this sandwich I don't think I'll be disappointed another unique feature about this being a value resort that no Disney resort has it actually has an indoor lounge called the swizzle lounge it's not open every night right now it's open Thursday to Sunday nights but this is a cocktail lounge, beer, wine, cocktails. And again, you don't oh, have that at most value resorts. Changed, because you can't bowl in a skirt, so now I'm wearing my very stylish overalls. I know. And headed to the lobby to go bowling. I'm very excited, because I'm gonna have date night for bowling. There's someone who had to work earlier, so couldn't hang out with me yet but uh, they're gonna join me for bowling because bowling alone sounds sad. Bowling with someone special sounds fun. I see my bowling date all alone in the lobby looking so sad, but so excited to bowl. Yes! What are you doing? Did you just happen to be here? Yeah. It's a nice lobby. It is a nice lobby. It's a good reading corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quincy is here. Yeah. Gonna go bowling. We're gonna go bowling. Who do you think will win? Me. Probably. I'm very bad at bowling. I'm also very bad, but I'm wearing bowling socks. Oh, that's a good point. So that is scientifically a, proven. Yeah, a big I, leg up or ankle up. I like I your mask. Say. Thank you. I like your mask. They're the same, but not. So this is Galaxy Bowl. It's $12.99 a bowler. And we are in lane five. They have every other lane going right now. So like this whole little seating section is ours. So there's no one near you. Uh, you do have to wear a mask the whole time. You can order drinks to your station. Um, not food right now. And uh, keep the balls when you're done so that they can clean them. Stay on the lane you're assigned. They just cleaned it for us. All right, again, it's $12.99. That does include your shoes. It's 45 minutes on the lane, but they actually gave us like, the clock says 50, because I think they pad it a little bit so you can get your shoes, find a ball you'd like to use, put your bowling socks on. If you I already have... have my bowling socks on. Good, good, you've come prepared. Yes. I just have regular socks. Which is why you will lose. Probably. When I was using the texting service earlier, I, they texted me and were like, reminder, you've got bowling. And I texted them back and was like, do I need to bring anything? And they said, socks and a mask. And then sent me the bowling pin emoji. Socks and a mask. I'm really into the texting service. Yeah. champion i think my bowling socks are broken yeah you are winning going into the last frame yeah i think maybe they broke it's a bummer yeah 
a bummer. It is a bummer. But that's okay. This was fun. Yeah, this was fun. $12.99. That includes 45 minutes of bowling and your shoes. Fun for the whole family. There are just two of us, and we got through all of the whole match with 20 minutes to spare. So keep in mind, if you have kids, if you're a bigger group, it's going to take longer. You might end up butting up against that time. So just keep an eye on it to make sure you get to finish your game. Yeah. And it's not super busy tonight, so you might be able to add another game on if you wanted to. But on really busy days, you'll probably be limited to the 145 minute slot. Um, she also let us know that if we wanted food, since we can't eat at the bowling alley right now, there are booths along the side. She said when there's about 10 minutes left, just let her know and she'll put us down for a table. So mm -hmm. we're going to do that. And uh, I'm going to buy Molly a snack. But I will buy you a drink. Aww. for coming on a date with me. That's so nice. We wrapped up our game. They kindly got us a table. Uh, we looked at the menu and then they said we place our order with the friendly bartender here. So we're gonna grab a couple post-game cocktails as well as a little snacky. We are sharing the loaded fries, which are crinkle cut fries, cheese, bacon, scallions, ranch. Quincy says she's a loaded fry connoisseur. I am. So we'll get her take on if these are good or not. To drink, I'm having the Galactic Lemonade. It is Tito's Vodka, Lemonade, and Strawberry Puree. And then I told him I don't love super sweet things, so he squeezed a fresh lime in it. He said that would bring out the tartness and keep it from being too sweet. So I'm excited to give it a whirl. Plus it's pretty in pink. Ooh, okay, that is pretty good. That is something I would order again. Um, I really appreciate him squeezing in the lime because it definitely is bringing out the tartness. He also went light on the strawberry puree for me because I told him that I don't like sweet drinks. And so it's mostly just tastes like vodka lemonade, which isn't anything that exciting, but it, the drink menu is very, very sweet on their specialty cocktails. So I gotta say, I like this more than the pool bar drink. So you can definitely taste the vodka on this one. All right, so I got the Pisces Rising, which is, as you can see, made with blue curacao. It's very blue. It's got Tito's vodka, ginger beer, lime, and blue curacao. So kind of like a mule, but blue. I'm excited to try it. Mm, it's pretty good. Um, you can definitely taste the blue curacao. So if you're not a blue curacao fan, I would maybe stick away from this one because it is a heavy flavor. However, the ginger beer really cuts it. I really like Moscow mules. So this is definitely on my alley because it's basically a Moscow mule. If you don't like that kind of thing, if you don't like ginger beer, if you don't like the curacao, then you want to head to some of the other drinks. I will note that when Molly and I were ordering, this bar has mostly sugary drinks on the menu. They can do some other stuff. They have a couple more options, but it is limited. But this is pretty good. And I don't like super sweet drinks, but it's not too sweet, even with all that blue curacao in it. And it's pretty blue. French fry time. dripped on yourself. That's pretty typical. Okay. That's a pretty good loaded fry. It is a good it is a good loaded fry. It has a cheese sauce in addition to actual cheese, which I think is doing good things. And then I'm getting the salty bacon in there. But I think scallions, you think they're just for pretty green, they're not. Out of line. Especially these loaded fries. They also add a little crunch, so mm -hmm. I mean not the most exciting thing or fanciest thing we've ever eaten, but for a Bowling alley food at a value resort? Not bad. Fire s'more. Fire s'more? Yes. This is my favorite kind. That is, you gotta get it I'm nice and yeah. yeah. I like to roast it and toast it a little bit and then I light it on fire. I like it, I like it when it's burnt on the outside. To a crisp. Yeah, and then on the inside. This is just so nice. There it is. Go, go, go. Just going burn down. Mine's just a slow rotisserie right there. That's really calm. Look at that. Don't burn it. Nice. 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 Had a great day here at Cabana Bay, exploring everything that this resort has to offer. Went bowling, ate three s'mores at the bonfire, had fish tacos, room tour, 
I'm talking it up to a great day. I'm really enjoying this resort. Um, but for now, washed my face, ready for bed, hoping some Law & Order SBU is going to come on. Um, but we got to get to bed because we're going to get up bright and early to go to Early Park Admission at Islands of Adventure tomorrow. I want to ride Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM with little to no weight. So I'll see you in the morning. And just like magic, it's morning. Slept pretty well, happy to report these beds were quite comfortable, but now it's bright and early and we got to get over to Early Park Admission at Islands of Adventure. Early Park Admission is a great perk of staying at one of the Universal Orlando Resorts because you get into one of the parks an hour early and certain attractions are open like Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. I wanna get on that with little to no weight. So we are headed first things first to get a coffee, of course, and then over to Islands of Adventure. Oh, and they do have the Early Park Admission at Volcano Bay certain mornings as well which is a great perk especially if you're staying here you can get over there get on the roller water coaster first thing in the morning that sounds like a good morning if you're a water park person okay terrible news there's a super long line to get starbucks i guess i should have expected this so instead of doing that i'm just going to get regular coffee from bayline or diner because to me right now, getting to the park is more important than waiting for Starbucks, but I would like a coffee to bring with me on my walk. Since we're in here, take a look at the breakfast menu. This one, the grill's got pancakes and French toast. This one in the middle has omelets, a CYO omelet situation. And then this one on the end has waffles and combos. Oh, and there's another one, breakfast sandwiches. So lots of breakfast options. All right, got my cup of coffee. It's a boring cup of coffee, but I would rather have a boring cup of coffee and be on my way than have a fancy cup of coffee and miss out on early park hours. So um, the team member that checked my bag, so I checked my bag with Bell Services while I'm in the park today. Um, the team member let me know it's about 1.2 miles walk. So I'm thinking it'll take me about 20, 25 minutes to get over there. Um, for reference, 1.2 miles is also how long it takes to walk from Mexico to Canada in Epcot World Showcase. So that'll help you decide if walking or taking the bus is for you. I'm going to take the bus back after being at the park this morning. So uh, here's some footage that, as I'm saying, hasn't happened yet. So here's a look into the future of what the buses are like. So it's hours later, I've been in the park, I had lunch at Tootsome and I'm headed back to Cabana Bay, headed to the buses. I will point out that where the buses drops you off is pretty far from where the actual entrance of the park is. It's the same as if you parked your own car. So keep that in mind, that's another reason I prefer walking because you actually come in a lot closer to the entrance, at least to Islands of Adventure than if you're on the buses. Honestly, in my opinion, if you can walk, that still wins for me because by the time you walk all the way here, get on the bus, and then ride over, you probably could have walked. So that's just for me. I know at the end of a park day, you're tired and you don't want to walk that much, but you're going to have to walk from City Walk to the bus anyway. You might as well put that time, which is probably half the time, towards walking back to the resort. Hello. Oh, welcome. Thank you. update it actually took me a few minutes longer to walk to the bus stop and get here on the bus than it did for me to walk all the way there just by the time you walk all the way to the bus stop which is pretty far it's like 12 minutes uh, or so so it's just almost it's more than half of how long it took to get there in general um, on foot and then you had to wait for other people to get on the bus and load and everything so I think walking's faster but again walking's not for everyone just what I found for the record Thunderbird and Castaway are the two buildings closest to this theme park pathway. So you may want to request one of those.
to be a little bit closer. Bet you didn't know I'm literally crossing a highway right now. That's pretty cool. This is very pretty. Looks like I am gonna have to cross the street, so street safety. Here's Royal Pacific right here and their boat dock. So obviously Cabana Bay is a value resort. Um, Royal Pacific, when I stayed there, we can link that resort tour for you, is in the top tier of resorts. So it's gonna be closer, but I've only been walking about five minutes. Granted, I'm a pretty speedy walker, um, but so far hasn't taken me too long. Okay. Now I've literally crossed the street and I'm literally at Royal Pacific. So the walk from here on out, if I remember correctly, should take about 10 or so more minutes. There's the entrance to Islands of Adventure right there. We're at City Walk. Another great thing about coming in on the walking trail versus the bus is that you get to use this little side security and it goes faster usually because there's only a few people coming in here versus when you get dropped off at City Walk, I believe you go through the security with everyone else. They route you past temp check, which is nice since you have your wristband on. Um, unless you need a new colored wristband, they change each day. But it is nice to come in on this little like side security. All right, so from the very end of Cabana Bay to here, it took me less than 20 minutes. All right, so here's the two lines to get an early park admission. But if you remember from my last time I did this, I came over here and there was another secret line that has less people in it, but also less turnstiles. But I remember it being faster. So let's see if we can go two for two with this line. We'll see. It's longer than it was. Well, maybe, I don't remember. We'll see. I know with the people that I got behind what they were wearing, so I'm gonna look for them. All right. So in total, from the furthest point of Cabana Bay to getting to the front of Islands of Adventure, it took me a little less than 20 minutes. Again, I'm a very fast walker, so I think you could account for 20, 30 minutes for the average party. That may be too long for some people. It's not that hot yet today, so it was a really nice relaxing walk, but in the summer that may be way too long to walk in the killer Florida heat. Um, so just up to you. I did see a bunch of buses going by. Keep in mind the buses are going to drop you farther back at City Walk, like as if you were coming in through the parking garage, just because we walk up right here. So, but it's really all up to you. Um, but also keep in mind, I was counting from the furthest tip of Cabana Bay. If, you were, if your room was on the other side, you'd have to add a few minutes. And if you were going over to Universal Studios, the other park, you'd have to add a few minutes for that too. So that's how long it took me. And it's a little after 7.30 now, so we'll see when they let us in the park in the park a few minutes before eight o'clock. I don't think it was faster to go to that side one today, but I do think today, because I started further back, it would have been faster to be in the long line because it did move pretty quick. Now, the attractions that open for early park admission do vary based on how busy it is. Um, it's not very many attractions at either park at this park. It's supposed to be today. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, Flight of the Hippogriff, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, so all three attractions in Hogsmeade, Wizarding World of Harry Potter, as well as Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man in Marvel Superhero Landing. And then on today, because it's a busy time of year, they're also supposed to be opening Ollivander's The Wand Shop for early park admission. So that's pretty cool. I had to show my room key, and they're routing us this way. Everyone else, they're routing another way, so they can't get in yet like onto the rides anyway update time hagrid's the attraction is not open yet they are preloading the queue into the actual attraction queue because they're hoping it's up soon i see the motorbikes running so they are testing it however i think we're going to go to Ollivanders instead and i will tell you why one i think i can get a virtual queue for hagrid's at nine o'clock when the park officially opens Two, there's no virtual queue for Ollivander's The Wand Experience. And three, the Ollivander's Wand Experience line is usually somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours during the day. So coming to the park and doing Ollivander's may actually be a good move. 
Update again, Elevators is open. They are running their shows. However, their line space is already at capacity. I assume that's partly because people knew it was a good idea to come here and partly because Hagrid's is still closed. The line when it's at capacity is about an hour and a half. Um, and they'll open it back up once they have more room. But obviously I can't get in that line either right now. At this point, I would say to get in the line for Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. It still says delayed on the marquee, but since they're loading the queue, that means that they are hoping to have it up soon. Another thing you could do if you have the pleasure of coming here a lot is take advantage of a very empty Hogsmeade and do some magic if you already have a wand because there's not gonna be any lines that I'm seeing on any of the magic squares. And then try and get a Hagrid's virtual queue at 9 a.m. That's a little bit more of a gamble. I'm gonna go get in the line for Hagrid's to see what time I can get on the ride. So I do adore this attraction. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM still says delayed on the app, but I've been moving through the queue very rapidly. Oh, hello, good morning. Thank you, um, and I'm about to get a locker, so I'm thinking good things could happen. All right, if you're not familiar, you got to put your stuff in a locker at Universal for the attractions. The small ones are complimentary. The larger ones are $2 to rent. I go for the larger one when I've got this specific backpack. Make sure you take whatever you use to open the locker with you. Um, so put it in your pocket, give it to someone who has a lanyard or a wallet because you need your room key and or ticket. For the record, I am entering the actual part of the queue 11 minutes after I got into the queue and put my stuff up. So it's moving really quickly. Just one. Um, I still don't know how. I didn't see anybody on the motorbikes. So, but hopefully, I don't think they'd let everyone load into this queue if they weren't gonna be getting people on the ride soon. We're still moving and yet I still don't see anyone on the bikes. I am actually so confused right now. It's kind of unbelievable how confused I am. How are we moving if they're not getting people through? Is the queue that long? Like, a lot of people were ahead of me, and yet I'm walking. Good news. It's a mystery. Today's Is it magic? Back on oh, it's back on Apologies schedule. Wow, and maybe that's how. But the plot of this very exciting roller coaster is that you're supposed to go to a care of magical creatures class with Hagrid, but Arthur Weasley decides that he's gonna make it more fun, so he enchants Sirius's motorbike and duplicates it, and then you go on your little adventure, but things go awry. And there's tons of different creatures and characters from the books, like Fluffy, the three-headed dog, Hagrid himself, the flying car, Pixies, Blasted and Scrooge, and it's awesome. I ended up waiting about 65 minutes to get on Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. And like, I'm not even mad because that attraction is so good. It makes me feel things I didn't know a roller coaster could make me feel. It is so much fun. If you're not a Harry Potter person, you still need to ride it. If you are a Harry Potter person, oh my gosh, you need to ride it. So many characters, so many creatures. Hagrid, Scroots, which is a deep cut for my book fans. Uh, unicorns, Flying Car, Pixies, Centaurs, Three-Headed Dog Fluffy. Amazing, so much fun. Universal has mastered the art of the story coaster. They do it great here. They do a great job over at the Mummy. I can't wait for Velocicoaster. A plus, A plus. So it did take me a little longer than the last time I did this. And the last time I came to Early Park Admission, I was able to ride it twice within the hour. But considering they had a delayed opening, I checked on some other things and I still got to ride it. I'll take it. All right, so let's recap a few things about Early Park Admission. One, it did again take me about 65 minutes to get on Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM from the time I got in line. Now keep in mind, I got in line not right when I got here. I went and checked out a few other things and then I went and got in line and they had a delayed opening. The attraction didn't actually open till 825. So that's really not that long. Also keep in mind with the fact that right now you can't just go get in line for Hagrid's. You have to have a virtual line and they're all gone. 
So I would rather wait for an hour than not be able to get a virtual line pass. However, they usually open the virtual line passes about 15 to 20 minutes before the park opens. So you could take the gamble of not riding Hagrid's during early park admission and snagging a virtual line. I don't know if I recommend that. That's a, that's a dicey move and I know you want to ride Hagrid's, but that is something you can consider. What I would say though, if you want to do Ollivander's, if that's the number one thing on your list, if you want to do the wand experience, you may want to get here very early for early park admission. I'm talking an hour before it starts, get yourself in line and then get over to Ollivander's very, very first. And that would be a better way to do it than ride it later. And then hopefully you'd still have time to get in line for Hagrid's or you'd be able to snag that virtual line. So things to think about. But gosh, do I love that attraction. As an update, I checked around 10 a.m. and I was able to see that I could have booked a Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventures TM uh, virtual line pass. I didn't book it since I've already ridden it and I don't want to take it from somebody, but they do come up throughout the day. So if you don't get one in the morning, make sure you keep checking back because they could pop up throughout the day. So another little tip for Hagrid. So if you want to be dicey, if you want to roll it, I would maybe go to Ollivander's very first if that's important to you and then try to get a virtual line for Hagrid's while you're either in line for Ollivander's or throughout the day. Well, friends, that is a wrap on my Universal Orlando Cabana Bay Resort tour, even though, of course, we're ending here in front of Hogwarts. I hope you had fun following along on the tour. I really think Cabana Bay is an excellent, excellent value resort. You're certainly getting more perks out of staying at Cabana Bay than you are out of some of the Disney value resorts right now. You've got that gym, you've got a bowling alley, multiple pools, lazy river, multiple restaurants. The food was great. You get that early park admission. So for me, definitely a great hotel to look at if you are coming to Universal Orlando. Let me know what questions you have in the comments, where you want to see resort tours next. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Ears Net. And until next time, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.